Well, good evening and welcome back. So, good news and bad news. The good news is that it seems that restrictions are eased in parts of northern England. Hooray! And that is down to the Conservatives, based from their London Westminster bubble, saying, well, hey guys, it's about time that you let these guys have a bit of their unalienable rights of freedom. You know, the kind of things that we can't take away in the first place, and yet somehow found a way to take it away and people weren't complaining yeah it's, it's about time that you give those back not because we've got no reason to take them away no not at all instead it's to say that we know everything and therefore what we've done is perfect as government is always perfect don't you know and therefore it's about time that you give it back because what government says is definitely mandate and can never be wrong whatsoever so the bad news is that it isn't down to the local state level or council level to say what should be happened given that they've been voted in by their electorate's constituents in order to say what should be happening but instead it's just down to the government instead so it doesn't matter who in their local constituency decides to vote for whomsoever but instead it depends on just mob rule and the majority which yes of course acts in our favor in this instance but not completely, because ordinarily you'd be hoping that they'd be going for the individual instead of going for what the uh, political party of the time is saying. However, instead of going for the individual of saying that it's down to state level in order to decide what should be going on, they're simply saying, well, this is going to be the national mandate and we don't care what you have to say about it and what your voters have to say about it. But instead, we're going to be telling you what you have to do. And that is where the problem lies. As nice as it is to say that... Yes, I would love to say that there should be a dictator who agrees completely with me and everybody should follow exactly what I say, as of course we would all enjoy. We've then got to realise the practicality of the matter and got to be a bit more pragmatic in it to understand that if we do that, we also have to understand that power corrupts and of course absolute power corrupts absolutely. And also because of term limits that if you set a precedent in your political party, then whenever the next guy gets in power, then they're able to do the same but in reverse. And therefore you're playing into their hands because as of course we're all individuals, we understand that the enemy, being the communists, are not whatsoever. And so if you set the precedent of overriding local government, then you've set the precedent for them to do the same. And what's to stop them from doing an equal step forward in that part and then they could lock you out forever. So at the end of the day, Lovely result, but not for the right reasons. And it, I know it sounds like a cliche to say it's not the winning that counts, but it's the taking part that counts. But it, it really is. The ends do not justify the means, I'm sorry to say. And therefore, although I do live in a shithole city, suggesting that it should be Labour instead and dictating what everybody does, that we have to be held responsible for our own actions. Even if it is as a collective, the representative democracy system we have going on is the best that we've got, except for the alternatives. <laughs> but it's it's the, the least bad of everything, essentially. And therefore, me choosing to move to Manchester then is, I suppose, complicit agreement to say that I'm okay with them doing what they're doing, voting in Lucy Powell and causing an absolute shit show of the city. That that is me voting with my feet and saying I'm going to live here anyway. And of course I disagree with it, but that's up to me to make it heard and try to change their minds. And if I fail, then that's my fault and not anybody else's. But it's not down to me then voting in somebody else who's 160 miles away to say, why don't you force the change where I live. That is not how it should work, even though in this instance, it works in my favor, that we really have to stay akin to the local side of things, because the bigger the group gets, as Dr. John B. Peterson has mentioned time and time again, that the bigger the group gets, the less impact the individual has, and therefore the more disillusioned they are with the group, and therefore the less they have respect for it and want to be a part of it. And as he said, that Brexit happened basically for the same reason, and that's what we would be fearing happening here as well. So, the good news is basically to say that the tighten of restrictions to stop the spread of COVID-19 are to be eased in parts of the northwest England, allowing more than a million people to mix in different households.
let's let's hope it's more than one household because that'd be a very busy household but from Wednesday, rules will be relaxed in Bolton, Stockport, Trafford, Burnley, Hintburn, and parts of Bradford, Calderdale, and Kirklees. Measures were imposed in those areas at the end of July, mid rising cases, as we all know. Health and Social Secretary Matt Hancock said, We brought in measures to protect people in these parts of Northern England. Bullshit. We're seeing the positive results of our local approach and are able to bring in increasingly targeted measures. How about actually fuck you, Matt? We thought that the Conservatives would be down to being a, a more individualistic approach and saying that, hey, you can decide for yourselves because the government doesn't really know much and therefore it's down to the individuals to make their own decisions. But instead of that, what we found is that they're saying we're going to push the, the party agenda on a collectivist ideal instead of as an individual and trying to suggest that a nanny state is what Conservatives would like. And simply put, no, it's just that we don't have a third party option and therefore we're going to vote for the Conservatives instead of anybody else. And having said that, it is distasteful, I would say, for them to suggest that they're actually helping. And if if we look around the country, then if you wish to draw any conclusions, then it's just down to ethnic minorities instead of anything else. And for him to suggest that, oh, it's because of our government's approach in having a local lockdown, and that's what's helping, because it's all down to daddy government in order to help you out, I think that's incredibly misleading, and suggesting that the government is a far more benevolent force than it actually is, and it really is not something that should be allowed to stay. People should be responsible for their own lives and should have the freedom to decide for themselves whether they wish to go to work, whether they wish to stay with their families, whether they wish to send their children to school, or, of course, home educate, as should be the case, and there will be a video coming up soon on the Patriot Alternative points for that, of home education instead of state education, but for the time being, of course, that still remains to be the law, and therefore, that's what we have to, to stand for, and it's just the way the things go. So, they say businesses which opened elsewhere in England on 15th of August, including bowling alleys and indoor play areas, will also be able to reopen in the areas where rules are being relaxed. Coronavirus cases per 100,000 population in Burnley have halved during the week ending 20th of August from 52 to 24.6, while cases in Bolton and Stockport fell from 25.6 to 18.9, and 23 to 15.1 respectively, and Trafford cases dropped from 27.1 to 17.8, the government said. So, as time goes on, we would expect the cases to drop simply because we're expecting this to affect fewer people because, of course, you have enough people who have been infected in the first place and therefore herd immunity is going to happen. But you've also got to take into consideration that these are ethnic minorities, of course, and when they have different age groups, in the same household, then of course you're going to have people who are at higher risk because they're older who are going to be suffering from these illnesses, whereas the younger people aren't. And it's not such a thought that it's going to be the younger people who are going to be sending this out and infecting the older people, seeing as they don't seem to be infected in the first place, and that's why schools are so much of a risk, and that is why that there hasn't been so much respect for the teachers' unions given that there isn't really much concern for the teachers to be infected as the children aren't going to be either. And the same goes for the parents of these children or the grandparents to be infected. That isn't going to be a problem because the children don't seem to be infected in the first place, unlike the Spanish flu from 100 years ago, which seemed to infect children more so when the soldiers came back. But, of course, it does play into the narrative that we've seen daily politics positive test per 100,000 past eight weeks has decreased in these areas which has the local lockdown. Let's not forget, of course, that we've seen the Pakistan Independence Day and the Afghanistan Independence Day, which has had a load of people correlating between each other and therefore spreading the illness between them. But nonetheless, they seem to say that they've put in those, those precautions And therefore, even though they've had people breaking lockdown, it is still going in their favour, which seems at least a little bit misleading. But nonetheless, they've decided to say that it is solely down to them of why this has managed to be the case. We've even got some Labour MPs saying, yes, well done for supporting us 
we support you as well. So, well done Labour, at least you're for the individual in these areas. Maybe it's just down to the ethnic minorities needing to keep their corner shops open, but we'll take what we can get. But, as always, let me know what you guys think down below. Always intrigued to hear what you guys have to say. And, as always, until next time, have a good one.